we're going to look at how to generate a table of values from an equation. It's going to vary just slightly depending on whether you use y equals notation or whether you use function notation, but you can do both. So we'll just look at one problem from each. We're going to start with the problem negative 100x plus 9,000. We can see a graph on the screen. We have a y-intercept on this graph of 0, 9,000, an x-intercept of 90, 0. It's a line that is steeply decreasing. To generate a table of values, in the left-hand panel, there's a gear icon. And in that gear, you'll see a few icons appear. The first of these icons is the table icon. And if we press this, what it will do is convert our equation to a table. So now we see the x values in the first column of the table. You'll notice that in this second column, we see the equation, but it's a little bit cut off on the screen. This is where you have to be really careful. And this is actually why I prefer to use the function notation. We have values in this table, and we can now edit this table or just add more values. You can do it in any order. So if you don't like the negative 2 that's there, just backspace over it. And maybe you want to find out what happens at 50. If you put in 50 for x, you'll see it automatically calculates 4,000 for the y value or the evaluation of negative 100x plus 9,000. And we can just continue doing that down the table. We can change the negative 1 to be a 100, and then we see negative 1,000 as the y value, etc. These points also show up on the graph as dots on the line. If you want to stop showing the points on the graph, you can tap on the circular icon next to the equation, and the lines and the dots will disappear. Now, if you press carefully and slowly on that, you will actually see that you can choose whether you want the line to show up or the points to show up, and those are actually separate choices. So if you don't want the points, but you do want the line, then just slide the slider to off on the points. Now we just see the line. Likewise, if you only want to see the points and you don't want to see the line, you can turn the lines slider to the off position and just see the points. So you always have that option by going into the editing menu for the object you've drawn. Now let's try this with function notation. We're going to graph f of x equals negative 50x plus 8,000. This produces the graph of a line that is decreasing with a y-intercept of 8,000 and an x-intercept of 160. Again, our goal here is to generate a table of values. So in the left-hand panel, we choose the gear icon, then we choose the table icon, and it generates a table of values. Now remember, I said I like this way better with function notation, and that's because the function stays as an object all on its own. All we see in the table is f of x, which is much easier to read, and now it's also much easier to separate whether you want points or a line. So if I want to take the points off, I can click the circular icon in the table to turn them off. And if I want to turn the line off, I can click the circular icon next to the function to turn it off. Again, we can edit our table however we'd like. Just backspace over the values in the x column and replace them to get values in the y column. We can't do it in reverse, so if we go to the Y column, you'll see that you can't actually edit that column. That's because you must have an input value to get the output. I do want to point out just a couple troubleshooting tips. If you have multiple functions with X and F of X in the left-hand panel, and you try to create a table, things are going to actually go pretty wrong for you. Let me just remove this table and prove it. I'm going to make a second F of X equation f parentheses x parentheses negative 20 x plus 8,000. Now let's try to generate that table of values. So we go into the gear menu, we choose the table icon, and we get this orange warning. And that's because Desmos doesn't know which of the f of x functions that you want it to evaluate. So it's just saying like, help, I don't have enough information. There's a simple fix to this, which is that we can simply change one of these functions to be some other letter. I'm going to change the function negative 20x plus 8,000 to be g of x instead of f of x. And now you'll see that the table of values 
is happy to generate itself. Now there is one other tricky thing here, which is that this table of values is for f of x, and just randomly, Desmos has chosen to mark it as purple. You can change the color to match it to the f of x. Just hold down on the circle icon and then change the color to match the color of f of x if that's making you a little crazy. My second tip is that if you're using variables other than x, Desmos has a little trouble figuring out what you're trying to do. So let's imagine we're doing something with f of t. I'm going to write a pretty simple function, f of t equals 250t. This is a increasing line. It has a y-intercept of 0, 0, so that's also the x-intercept. So let's just generate a table of values for this, and you can see what happens. In the left-hand panel, we click on the gear menu, we click on the table icon, you'll see that we have two error messages there. It, it just doesn't know what to do with the letter T. It knows what to do with the letter X. So you have two choices. You can change it to X's, or you can simply put a subscript on the T in both places. So if I put a subscript on the first T, if I just write a number after the T, the number 1, that makes it T sub 1. And then for F of T, again, I'm just going to put the same subscript. Just type the number. You don't need to do anything fancy. So it now reads F of T sub 1. And now you see it generates the table of values just fine. So just be aware if you use other function letters or multiple f of x's, you're going to get these orange errors. It's your job to be the smart one. Desmos just carries out what you're doing.